Welcome to the short video showing you how to use turf analysis with IBM SPSS statistics. Turf analysis stands for Total Unduplicated Region Frequency. It's a statistical technique that helps you figure out which combination of products or services or offers will appeal to the largest audience. It works particularly well with data where people have been asked to choose their preferred options from a list, for example, in a multiple response question in a survey. It can also work well with retail data where the items in the shopping basket reflect the choices people made within a store. In IBM SPSS statistics, turf analysis is installed by default as part of the Python Essentials package. Here's an example of the sort of question that could be used as the basis for turf analysis. In the multiple response question, respondents have been asked to tick which of the following establishments they have visited within the last 30 days. And the data that this generates could be used by managers of a retail park to find out what selection of restaurants will have the widest possible appeal to the largest audience of shoppers when they come to visit the retail park. Analysts can also use a sliding scale as the basis for a turf analysis particularly when people are asked to express a preference for a particular product or service. In this case, the analyst would simply pick a certain cutoff point, say above seven, to indicate that that person had a preference for that particular option. Turf analysis works best if there are a finite set of constraints when providing or offering a selection of products or services. Examples of constraints include when you can't put all the products in the shelves because there simply isn't enough room for them in the store, you're unable to offer all classes at the same time because there aren't enough instructors or rooms available. Or you can't advertise in every possible magazine because the budget is limited. Ideally, when offering a range of products or services, we want them to appeal to different groups of people in order to maximize our reach. Each time we include an option, it should add new potential customers. In this example, we have added an extra two options but that has only generated an extra 20 people to the original group of 100. In the second example, the additional options have added an extra 100 potential new customers. Because of problems like this, turf analysis is used by retailers to identify the optimal product line to maximize the total number of customers who will buy at least one SKU or product. Health clubs use turf analysis to figure out the optimal range of facilities and classes to appeal to the largest possible number of subscribers. Marketing managers use turf analysis to maximize their audience when choosing publication titles in which to place advertisements. One of the most common analogies that's used to explain how turf analysis actually works is the example of an ice cream vendor that has 10 different ice cream flavors. Unfortunately, however, the retail channel only has room for four flavors at any one time. Given this situation, what is the optimal combination of four flavors that will have the greatest appeal? Turf analysis attempts to maximize a value called the reach. If we offer every flavor option, that's all 10 flavors, then we reach everyone. Conversely, of course, if we only offer one flavor, then it won't appeal to everyone. Given that we've got four different options here that we can offer, different combinations have different reach values. And in this situation, there are 210 separate combinations. Turf analysis also tries to maximize the total number of items within a given combination that appeal to as many people as possible. This value is known as the frequency. In order to find the optimal combination of products or options, turf analysis begins with the most popular option. This of course will have the largest single reach percentage. Furthermore, given that customers can purchase more than one product or service at any given time, you will have a specific frequency percentage as well. As turf analysis increases the number of options in the portfolio, the reach and frequency value steadily climbs until the group size limit is met. In this case, the analyst has set the maximum group size at seven. To finish off, let's have a look at how turf analysis is actually performed in IBM SPSS statistics. 
The example within the SPSS statistics concerns a dataset from a small canteen. The dataset is comprised of 369 customers. Each customer has indicated their food preference from a menu of 18 options. And the options range from things like pizza through to vegan, vegetarian options, salads, desserts, fish dishes, kids' plates, roasts or buffet. Unfortunately, the canteen can only offer six different options. So we're faced with what is the optimal combination to go for. If we want to illustrate the breakdown in the different options and how popular they were within the survey, we can do so by going to Analyze, Tables, Custom Tables. And using a multiple response set that we've defined already, we can ask for a breakdown of the different options. If I go here to Summary Statistics, I can ask for different percentages. Put in column percent here. And give that the label percentage of customers. And if I go down here to the multiple response options, I can put in row responses or column responses here. And that will actually be the percentage of menu items. The table that's generated is one where it shows us a breakdown of the different menu items. So we can see that uh, pizza and burgers are equally popular here at 39.5% of customers have chosen these as items they'd like to see in the menu. As a, total, as a percentage of the total number of selections that were made by all of the customers, they represent about 8.9%, 8 just under 9% each. The least popular are vegan, only 8.5% of customers that say they'd like to see vegan on, on the menu. And they represent 1.9% of all of the different selections made. And we can see that things like desserts and fish, dishes and pasta are kind of around about the middle here, 26.5% or 24%. If we want to actually perform a turf analysis, we simply go to back to the data menu and we go up to analyze here, descriptive statistics and call up turf analysis. To run the analysis, we need only select the variables or the menu items, all 18 of them, and send them into the variables to analyze box. And then we need to set the maximum variable combinations. This is the maximum number that we can actually show on the menu within the canteen. And you remember that number is six. Now, given that there's more than one solution and it will have slightly different numbers in terms of the reach and frequency, we can ask it to display uh, different combinations of different items. This is particularly useful if you know, there are different costs associated with the items, for example, with certain items which are harder to get hold of than others. We don't need to set the minimum percentage of resp positive responses, and it will always count uh, value number one by default anyway. So that's the value that indicates that somebody has made that selection. If I click that at that point, it will begin the analysis, run through that process, and squirts the results out onto the output window. So let's have a look at the results. First thing we do is look at the uh, maximum group reach when we're using just one item. And what we find here is that if we're using just one item, we're using pizza and burgers, so as we saw, they have equally popular to one another. So you'd get 107, a reach of 107 items, 107 people, for example, and that would also be a frequency of 107, which would be 8.9% of all possible responses. So this is simply reflecting what we've seen earlier on within the multiple response table. Then it starts to increase the group size and it says, okay, burgers and pizza, even though there's obviously an overlap between them, that goes to 174 now from 107. So now we're reaching 47% of the customers and that represents 17% of all the possible items we could show. Alternatively, you could put kids and pizza, kids and pizza, which will give you a, a, a selection of 165 or bakery and pizza, which will give you a reach of 168. And these have slightly different values with regard to the reach, but no difference in terms of the percentage of responses. As we increase the maximum group size to three here, we can see now it says burger, kids, pizza. That has a reach of 203 from 274. So we've added about another uh, 29 people onto that group, which is now 55% reach. Uh, the frequency now has gone to 311. So that's a larger proportion of all possible menu items that people could have. We get the maximum group four, and you can see now that we've got three of them solutions here. We've got bakery, chicken, kids, meals, and pizza. 
five bakery chicken kids pasta pizza and six we now have we can now see what's actually happening in, in the last group six here it says bakery burgers chicken kids pasta pizza that gets you a reach of 66 percent and it's 47 percent of all possible menu items so 47 percent uh, uh, for, for the frequency value there which is a frequency of 570. So you can see here we've got three different options. We've got bakery, burgers, burgers, chicken, kids, pasta, pizza, or bakery, chicken, kids, pasta, pizza, vegetarian. If there was a requirement that you were vegetarian, you'd still get the 66%, so it was slightly less. Or bakery, burgers, chicken, fish, kids, pizza, which would get you to 243, which is 65.9. Slightly different frequency values, slightly different percentage of responses in each case. The, f the best reach is the one that it finds up here. So this is the best reach in frequency by group sizes. And it's simply giving you a little report that it started adding pizza. First of all, it's the first one. Then it went burgers, kept pizza, kids, burgers, pizza. Uh, bakery and chicken was added. It kept uh, kids and pizza. It dropped burgers at that point. So it's showing you the permutation history as it's going down through that until it gets to group six. And then it tells you the number of unions that actually calculated. Finally, it gives you a little uh, a little uh, graphic here representing uh, the journey that has gone through to find the optimal combination of menu items here and what the frequency and reach is and what the gain is at each step as we add uh, extra options onto the menu items. That's turf analysis.